thank you, Philip, for the introduction and uh, thanks you to the organizers um, for the opportunity to speak here. Um, I'm very pleased uh, to be here. Uh, so as Philip said, I will speak on unlikely intersections and distinguished categories. Um, and the work I present today is a joint work in progress with Fabrizio Barroero um, that now is uh, pretty much uh, finished and, and should appear on the archive uh, soon. Um, so roughly, I want to speak about three things. Um, what are unlikely intersections? Um, so especially for people who, who are not familiar with this field, and then what are distinguished categories, which is something that uh, Fabrizio and I are um, proposing uh, to introduce. And then thirdly, what can we prove about unlikely intersections using distinguished categories? Uh, so here's a, a quote about unlikely intersections uh, by Lady Bracknell from The Importance uh, of Being Earnest. To lose one parent may be regarded as a misfortune. To lose both looks like carelessness. Um, I, I, I would love to be the person who came up with this joke, but uh, it was Galbin Yamini. But uh, so this is what you should keep in mind. So we have something uh, unlikely that maybe happens once, but we don't expect uh, to happen it twice, or uh, we don't expect it to happen too many times. Um, so then I want uh, to start with uh, this theorem, which is a very special case of a result by Bombieri, Masser and Zanier uh, from uh, 99, um, which in this very special case just says, uh, that there are at most finitely many uh, complex numbers tau, such that tau, tau plus one, and tau plus three uh, satisfy two independent multiplicative relations. Um, so what does this mean? There exist linearly independent vectors, A, B, C, D, E, F, with uh, integer entries such that tau to the A times tau plus one to the B times tau plus three to the C equals one, and they're the same for D, E, and F. Um, and of course, if we just impose one such relation, uh, then we can solve it for tau, and we find a tau that satisfies it. And by varying the relation, we find many taus. But then uh, the theorem tells us in all but finitely many cases, uh, this tau will not satisfy a second uh, relation that is independent from the first. Um, so. Yeah, I chose this example because here we can easily find some tau uh, for which there are two relations. So if we take tau equal to one, we get one, two, and four. And then we, uh, with this choice of A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, yeah, we see that these relations hold. So there might be, or in this case, there are finitely many uh, exceptions, yeah, but only finitely many of them. So this, this uh, special case is an instance of a more general theorem that they proved. So if we uh, take any curve C um, inside uh, the nth power of the, of the complex multiplicative group, so that's just uh, the complex numbers without zero to the n, um, in the example n was equal to three, and we take any curve in there that is defined over the field of algebraic numbers Q bar, and whose coordinate functions are multiplicatively independent modulo constant functions, um, then the curve contains at most finitely many points that satisfy two independent multiplicative relations. Um, and this, uh, it was then later shown uh, by Morin and uh, in combination with, with a further result of Bombieri, Mustard, Zanier that this stays true also for curves that um, are not necessarily defined over Q bar um, and whose coordinate functions are just uh, multiplicatively independent, um, not multiplicatively independent modular constant functions. So some non-trivial product might be, const uh, might be constant, but not equal to one. And uh, this condition that the coordinate functions should be multiplicatively independent, it's quite clear that uh, this is necessary 
uh, because if this isn't satisfied, then we, we have one non-trivial relation that holds on the whole curve. So we get one relation for free, and then we can again impose a second one. Uh, and by varying that, we find infinitely many points satisfying two independent relations. Um, so, so the guiding philosophy here is that um, a curve has dimension one. And if we impose two independent multiplicative relations, this defines a subvariety of co-dimension two. Um, and so um, in the absence of any other information, we expect the intersection to have dimension one minus two, which is negative, which means we expect the intersection to be empty. Um, and then, of course, we can vary the two relations that we impose. Um, and, and for each uh, pair of relations, we expect an empty intersection. But of course, in some cases, it could happen that, that the intersection is non-empty. But still, we expect the union of over all these probably empty intersections to be finite, um, unless there is a reason for it uh, not to be finite uh, in the form uh, of a multiplicative relation that holds identically on the curve. Um, yeah, OK, so, so before I, I continue, um, uh, here is, uh, I want to introduce some settings. So fields are uh, always of characteristic zero. Um, K is, is our ground field, which is algebraically closed of characteristic zero. You can think of the complex numbers or the algebraic numbers. Um, and varieties will always be reduced, irreducible, and uh, defined over K unless uh, stated otherwise. Uh, and subvarieties will always be closed. Um, so now I, I, I want to basically restate the theorem I already stated, but in with a slightly uh, different uh, terminology that is then also uh, well suited to, to generalization. And for this, I want to speak about uh, special and weakly special subvarieties. And uh, um, so here I let G be a connected uh, commutative algebraic group. Um, so I can introduce this in this generality. So for example, uh, the case we had before, uh, a power of the multiplicative group of C star but uh, G could also be an elliptic curve or a power of an elliptic curve um, or an abelian variety, um, semi-abelian variety, or also the additive group uh, GA or, or a power of that. Um, and then a special subvariety of G is just a component of an algebraic subgroup of G, while a weakly special subvariety of G is a translate of a connected algebraic subgroup of G uh, by an arbitrary point. Um, and then uh, it's easy to check that if we intersect two special subvarieties, uh, any component of the intersection will again be special and the same for weakly special. And uh, therefore, if we have a subvariety V of G, we can uh, define its uh, special closure uh, v in angular brackets to be the smallest special subvariety containing V. Uh, and similarly, we can define the weakly special closure to be the smallest weakly special subvariety containing V. Um, okay, and just to give a concrete example, if we're again in a power of the multiplicative group, uh, then special subvarieties are just components of subvarieties defined by equations of this form, um, x1 to the a1 times x2 to the a2, uh, and so on times xn to the an equals one uh, for some integers a1 to an. Um, and then special points um, are torsion points, so, so points um, whose coordinates are all roots of unity. Um, and weakly special subvarieties um, are components of subvarieties defined by equations, um, again, of the form x1 to the a1 uh, product up to xn to the an, but now just equal to uh, some constant element y of the field, not necessarily one.
Okay, so um, uh, having introduced this this terminology, um, it's now a good uh, point to go a bit back in history and uh, speak about this uh, theorem of Laurent, which is the um, the toric version of the Manin Mumford conjecture, uh, which says that uh, if we have a sub variety V of a power of the multiplicative group, it contains a Zariski dense set of torsion points if and only if it is special. Um, so, so one direction here is, is quite easy. If, if you have a component of an algebraic subgroup, it will contain a Zariski dense set of torsion points, and the, the non trivial uh, direction is the other one. Or equivalently, um, we can also say that a subvariety of a power of the multiplicative group contains at most finitely many maximal special subvarieties. Um, so, in a subvariety, you might have, uh, for example, infinitely many uh, torsion points, but then the theorem tells you that uh, the subvariety must contain a special subvariety of positive dimension. And if we go to maximal special subvarieties, there, there are most finitely many of them. Um, so in particular, what, what does this mean for curves? Um, a non-special curve contains at most finitely many uh, special points. Um, so, so this statement is somewhat similar to the statement before that um, uh, if no relation holds identically on the curve, then there are most finitely many points that satisfy two independent relations. And, and soon we will see a statement that unifies uh, uh, both these uh, statements. Okay, so here's, here's again the theorem from before, now in a bit uh, more general context. So, um, so I, this is attributed to various people because this is actually not a theorem, but more a, a scheme of a theorem. I'll, I'll say something about that in a minute. Uh, so here the, the ambient variety G is a semi-abelian variety. So uh, for example, a power of the multiplicative group uh, or an abelian variety, or uh, I mean, the most general case would be uh, an extension of an abelian variety by a power of the multiplicative group. And we have a curve C in there uh, that satisfies a certain hypothesis, hype C, I'll say in a minute what, what this is. And then the set sigma of points on the curve um, such that the dimension of the special closure of the point is at most the dimension of G minus two, uh, this set is finite. Um, so as I said, this is a, a scheme of a theorem. And uh, so actually many theorems combined into one. And uh, this table here uh, shows uh, some instances where we know that uh, this theorem is true. So the case I already spoke about is if um, G is a, a power of the multiplicative group um, and the base field is the complex numbers and the hypothesis on the curve is that uh, the special closure of the curve should be equal to G. So this just means uh, there's no non-trivial multiplicative relation uh, between the coordinate functions of the curve. So, so this is really just the theorem I, I uh, stated before. And as I said, this uh, is known thanks to um, work of Morin and uh, Bombieri, Masser and uh, Zanier. Um, then, uh, this uh, theorem was also proved for certain special abelian varieties A over Q bar. So for example, um, powers of elliptic curves or um, abelian varieties with complex multiplication. Um, and sometimes under uh, the stronger hypothesis that the weakly special closure of the curve should be equal to G. Um, so, so which in the GM case would say that uh, no non-trivial product of the coordinate functions is constant. Uh, sometimes also with the, the weaker hypothesis that just the special closure of C is equal to G. Uh, so this was done by, by various peoples um, in the uh, first uh, decade of, of this uh, millennium. Uh, and then in 2016, um, uh, Habegger and Pila um, prove this theorem for an arbitrary abelian variety A over Q bar with the, the weaker but the necessary hypothesis. 
Um, and in a, in a preprint that uh, is, is accepted for publication, but, but has not appeared yet, Fabrizio and I uh, then extended this to, to a billion varieties over C. Um, and in, in recent work in progress, uh, Barrero, Kühne and uh, Schmidt um, even treated an arbitrary semi-abelian variety, but, uh, but now again, uh, only over, over Q bar. Yeah, so, so these are, are the, the instances where, where this theorem is, is known. Um, so before I, I continue and give a, a general conjecture that somehow unifies uh, the Mann and Mumford statement and, and the statement in this theorem, I, I have to introduce yet more terminology, but, but this will uh, be the last reformulation. So um, for a subvariety V of G, I can define its defect to be the difference in dimension between the special closure of V and V. And then if I have a chain of subvarieties W inside V inside G, um, I call W optimal for V in G. Um, if there is no way of making W bigger while still remaining inside V without increasing the defect. So um, any subvariety U that's in V and, and strictly larger than W must have defect larger than the defect of W. Um, and then we can also define the weak defect and being weakly optimal just by replacing here the, the special closure by the weakly special closure. Um, so, so how does this relate to the previous uh, statement? So if we have a curve inside G whose special closure is equal to G, uh, then the defect of the curve um, is by, by plugging into the definition is just the dimension of G minus one. Um, and so a point on the curve will be optimal for the curve in G um, if and only if its defect is, is strictly smaller than the defect of the curve. Um, and the defect of a point is just the dimension of the special closure of the point. So the optimal points here are just the points whose special closure has a dimension at most, the dimension of G minus two. So we get uh, the, the set of optimal points in this, uh, in this case is precisely this set sigma that we had in the theorem before, um, where the theorem said it was finite. Um, okay, so I hope that um, this uh, uh, is, is sufficiently convincing um, to you uh, to make uh, this uh, conjectural generalization of the theorem um, due to uh, Silber and, and in this formulation due to Habegger and Pila, uh, which basically says if we have any subvariety V inside G, um, it contains at most finitely many optimal subvarieties. Um, and uh, here I, I want to introduce uh, this statement ZPGMD, um, which says that uh, any subvariety of dimension at most M contains at most finitely many optimal subvarieties of defect at most D. Um, just because later um, I want to speak about the result where that says if we know this for some M and D, we also know it in a more general context for the same M and D. And so it's, it's not necessary to prove it for all M and D. Um, there's also a different form of this conjecture due to pink where maybe the, the unlikely intersections aspect is, is a bit more clear. Uh, and this uh, says if we have a subvariety V of G and uh, by G uh, superscript K, we denote the union of all special subvarieties of G of co-dimension at least K. Then if the special closure of V is equal to G, um, then the intersection of V with all special subvarieties of co-dimension, at least the dimension of V plus one, is not so risky dense in V. So you have something of dimension V and you intersect it with things of co-dimension larger than the dimension of V. Um, and, and you expect the intersection uh, not to be so risky dense in, in V. Um, unless there is a reason for it in that V is contained in the proper special subvariety of G. 
Um, so it's it's fairly elementary to see that um, the upper formulation of the conjecture implies the lower one. And, and one thing that came out of the work of uh, Fabrizio and myself is that uh, in this context of semi-abelian varieties, also the other uh, direction holds. So these con two conjectures um, are actually equivalent. All right, so, so this includes Mann and Mumford, since uh, the optimal subvarieties of defect zero of V, um, these are precisely the maximal special subvarieties of V. So as, uh, uh, the, the subvarieties of defect zero are the special subvarieties, and being optimal just means not being contained in a larger special subvariety contained in V. Um, so this statement Z, uh, ZPG M0, uh, for any M, this is precisely Mann and Mumford uh, for G. Uh, proven by, by Renault in the abelian case, uh, and then Hindry in the, in the most general case. Uh, and then I, I can't go into details, but uh, the, the, um, the silver pink conjecture also uh, implies the more than Lang conjecture. Uh, proven, of course, by, by Faltings uh, and, uh, and, and Hindry. Um, so in particular, to give a, a bit a down-to-earth example, uh, it implies that if we have a polynomial equation in two variables, like, for instance, this one, uh, that defines a curve of genus at least two, this will have at most finitely many solutions in, in rational numbers x and y. So, so this silver-pink conjecture, uh, so somehow uh, many um, important conjectures uh, and results in number theory uh, are, are summarized by it. Okay, so, so up to now we were in the world of commutative algebraic groups or of semi-abelian varieties. So now I, I want to introduce another world, the modular world, where all these concepts that I've introduced so far um, also exist and the corresponding conjectures can be made. Uh, Gabriel, there's yes. a question in the chat room, Fabio. Uh, please just ask away. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Gabriel, could you just comment a bit on the choice of this genus two curve? <laughs> oh, um, um, what, what, uh, how come, what are these numbers? What, uh... <laughs> Well, the, um, the, the birth years of, of three people are in there. And I, I think all these people are, are now in, uh, in, in this seminar as, as speakers or, or as uh, parts of the audience. Who was born in 130? <laughs> <laughs> Only three people. Uh, no, I, I think also there's nobody here who was born in the year M1. <laughs> okay. Um, somebody was born then, so. <laughs> nobody who's here now. Uh, well, anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, so, yeah, so there's, there's this whole other modular world of uh, Shimura varieties or, or mixed Shimura varieties. If, if this frightens you, then uh, I can say that it also frightens me. Um, and and uh, some examples uh, will, will soon be uh, forthcoming. But uh, the important thing is that, that all these, these concepts I've introduced up to now uh, also exist in that context and, and, and also the, uh, a version of the silver pink conjecture. And uh, what you, you might be familiar with in, in that case is again the, the d equal to zero case that corresponds to Mann and Mumford, um, uh, which is the Andre Ort conjecture, um, which for uh, Shimura varieties um, of abelian type uh, is, is known by, by work of, of Zimmerman. Um, yeah, so some examples. So typical examples here are are moduli spaces of abelian varieties and, and families of abelian varieties. Um, so for example, the, the affine line A1, which is the, the moduli space of elliptic curves. So uh, think of, of the J invariant um, or AG, 
which is the uh, moduli space of principally polarized abelian varieties of dimension G, um, which, which is a variety of uh, dimension uh, G times G plus one over two. Um, or to also give a, a family of abelian varieties, uh, for instance, the uh, Legendre family of elliptic curves uh, that is defined um, by, by this equation, y squared z is, is x, x minus z, x minus lambda z, uh, which for varying lambda not equal to zero or one, um, parameterizes a, a varying elliptic curve in the, in the projective plane. Um, and, and special points here are just uh, torsion points on fibers with complex multiplication. Or in the case where you just have a, a moduli space, they are just points corresponding to, to CM abelian varieties. So, so yeah, I, I hope this uh, um, gives a bit of a picture of, of this modular world. Um, Okay, so, so that's part one. What, what are unlikely intersections? Now, what are distinguished categories? So, so this is something we propose uh, to unify both these worlds that I've introduced up to now uh, into one uh, context uh, and to give uh, unified proofs of, of certain statements and, and also prove new results. Okay, so... Um, so we have a category C with um, objects V morphisms M and the covariant functor F uh, to the category of varieties over K. And uh, so this functor is a, is a technical nuisance and just think of the inclusion functor. So uh, C is a subcategory of uh, the category of varieties. This will not always be true, but, uh, but uh, um, yeah, for simplicity, uh, think like this. Then we call this category distinguished uh, if it satisfies four axioms. So first of all, it should have uh, direct products um, that are mapped by F to direct products. Um, uh, second, um, it, uh, it almost has a fiber products in a sense. So um, if we have two morphisms uh, phi from x to z and uh, psi from y to z. And um, then after applying the functor f, uh, we can look at the, um, the fibered product inside the direct product. Uh, and this axiom tells us that we can cover this fibered product by the images of finitely many distinguished morphisms. So there, there are morphisms uh, phi one up to phi n from some xi into the direct product x times y, uh, such that the, the fiber product is covered by the images of the f of uh, phi i. Okay, axiom three um, uh, just says that the category has, has a, a final object that is mapped to a single point by the functor. Um, and axiom four, uh, says if we have any morphism phi, then first of all, its image should be closed. And uh, then uh, it should factorize in a certain way. So as you see in this diagram, so we have a, a finite surjective cover uh, W of X. And after passing to this cover, uh, the morphism should factor into first a morphism with irreducible fibers of constant dimension, and then a morphism with finite fibers. So maybe it's good here to think about um, algebraic groups. Um, so if you have any homomorphism between algebraic groups, you can first quotient out the identity component of the kernel, uh, and then you're left with a morphism with finite fibers. Um, yeah, and, and of course these properties are, are properties of the, uh, the images of these uh, morphisms under the, the functor. Okay, so, so some examples. So, um, okay, there's a completely trivial example where the objects are just powers of a fixed um, variety uh, and the maps um, are just of the form we take a tuple x1 up to xn uh, and we map it to xi1 up to xim for some choice of indices, um, maybe with repetition. And, and the functor is just the inclusion functor. Um, 
So, so everything that comes later kind of also makes sense in this trivial example, but, but all the statements are, of course, trivial. Um, then an interesting example are um, connected uh, commutative algebraic groups. So, so these are the objects and the morphisms are um, homomorphisms of algebraic groups composed with translations by torsion points. And the functor is again the inclusion functor. Um, so, so if you think this through, if we have two algebraic uh, two connected commutative algebraic groups, their product will again be a connected commutative algebraic group. Um, and for the fibered product, the point just is that the, the fibered product is an algebraic subgroup. Um, so we, we can uh, cover it by translates of its identity component by torsion points. Um, and then the final object is, of course, just the, the trivial group. Um, and then this A4 is, is, is also satisfied uh, by, by essentially what I said uh, before. Um, and also we know that the image of a homomorphism of algebraic groups is always closed. And then we can also take full sub uh, subcategories of this category um, where we restrict the class of objects, for example, to be just the abelian varieties or just the semi-abelian varieties, just powers of the multiplicative group or just powers of the additive group. Okay, and then you, you might uh, have expected that the third example is, is in the modular world, so um, connected uh, mixed Shimura varieties. So, and, and these are the reason why we need this functor. So I, I don't want to go into the technical uh, details here, but, but basically, so objects here are, are triples of this form Px plus gamma. Um, Px plus is a, a connected mixed Shimura datum and gamma is a, is a congruent subgroup. Um, and, and, and then we um, can look at, at certain morphisms between such triples and, and the functor associates to such a triple a certain uh, variety over Q bar. Um, and, and here the functor is needed. So we somehow have to keep track of this data associated to the variety. So it, it could happen that for, for different triples, uh, so that, so, or, or it does happen that different non-isomorphic triples are just mapped to a point by the functor. But, but we somehow need this additional information about where this point came from. Um, okay, and, and, then, and then here also, um, we can just look at connected Shimura varieties or just at uh, connected mixed Shimura varieties of, of Kuga type. Uh, so, so what is the, the upshot of this? So, um, so the elements of V I will call distinguished varieties and the elements of M distinguished morphisms. And from now on, I, I just uh, will often tacitly identify them with their images under the functor. This is uh, fairly harmless. Uh, and then I can define in this setting what a special subvariety is. It's just the image of a distinguished morphism. And I can also define weakly special to be um, a component of uh, the image of the pre-image of a point um, for a pair of distinguished morphisms. So we have phi from y to x, psi from y to z, and, and we fix a, a closed point in z. And, and take a component of phi of psi inverse of z. Um, and in, in all the examples, these definitions coincide with the usual ones. So for example, for algebraic groups, you um, can go back and, and check that this gives exactly the same as, as the definition I gave earlier. Um, and they literally coincide with Pink's definition of these concepts in the case of mixed Shimura varieties, where we, we kind of got the idea from. Uh, and then once we have a special and weakly special subvarieties defined, um, I, I, I will tell you in a minute that, for example, components of the uh, intersection of special subvarieties are special. Um, and the same for weakly special. So then we can again define the special closure, the weakly special closure, uh, the defect and the weak defect, just as we did for subvarieties of uh, connected commutative algebraic groups. 
Um, and then similarly, we can also define what it means to be optimal or what it means to be weakly optimal. So in particular, we can formulate um, a silver pink statement like the one we had before. Okay, so now why these axioms? Maybe they seem somewhat random. So I, I don't have a, a justification for A1 about the existence of direct products. This just, uh, apart from that, it seemed natural to, to demand this and that it's satisfied in all the examples. But um, concerning the other axioms, so first of all, A4 tells us that the image of a distinguished morphism is closed. So from this, we get that special subvarieties are closed. This is certainly something we'd, we'd want. Um, and then special subvarieties are weakly special because of A3. So A3 says there's always a morphism that maps everything to a point. Um, and so if I have the image of a distinguished morphism, it's also uh, the image uh, of the pre-image of a point, just, just by taking the, the morphism that maps everything to a point. Uh, and A2 in, in the presence of A1 actually is equivalent to say that irreducible components of intersections of special subvarieties are special. So, so that's why there is this axiom about fibered products. Um, and then with A2 and A4, we can also prove some other natural things like uh, components of images or pre-images of special subvarieties are special and the same for weakly special. Uh, and components of intersections of weakly special subvarieties are weakly special. So um, yeah, ma many, many uh, natural properties that you'd want to hold. And, and the factorization in A4, so that you can factorize this with these three morphisms, phi one, phi two, phi three, with their special properties, this is, is crucial in order to be able to prove uh, anything non-trivial. Um, so I guess if you if you drop that, then you could just take all projective varieties and all morphisms between them. Um, and, and of course, then not much could be proven, uh, but imposing this, this uh, certain kind of factorization actually um, rigidifies the, the situation somewhat. Okay, so, so now for the third part, what can we, we prove about unlikely intersections using distinguished categories. So I, I already gave you some basic statements that we can prove. And um, also, if, if somebody uh, is familiar with the so-called defect condition, this is also something we can prove with A1 to A4. Uh, but what I want to speak about now is a bit different. Um, so um, I, I told you that we uh, generalized this theorem of Habegger and Pilaf from Q bar to C. Uh, and so we realized that some steps in this process of extending the base field uh, were quite formal and could maybe also work in, in much bigger generality. Uh, and this is what I want to speak about now, but, but unfortunately I have to first introduce a fifth axiom that, that you see here and um, that informally says that weakly optimal subvarieties come in finitely many families. So it's a bit much to digest. So if X is a distinguished variety and V is a subvariety, then there exists a finite set of pairs phi and psi of distinguished morphisms such that for, for any subvariety W inside V that is weakly optimal for V, uh, we find a pair phi psi in this set um, and the point small z in, in uh, z psi such that, uh, okay, phi should have finite fibers and the weakly special closure of this W is an irreducible component of uh, phi of psi inverse of Z. Um, so so uh, going back to, to GM to the N, this just says if you have a sub variety V inside GM to the N and you have a, a weakly optimal sub variety thereof, you look at the weakly special closure uh, this will be a translate of one of finitely many subtori of GM to the N. Um, so, so this is also sometimes called a, a structure theorem. Um, and then since I, I talked about extending the base field, so if you have a distinguished category over K and uh, you have a bigger algebraically closed field L containing K, 
uh, then we can just compose the functor with the base change functor and we get a distinguished category over L. So all these properties are preserved if we just base change everything. So you could imagine that we go from Q bar to C, for example. Um, and then we call a category, a distinguished category, very distinguished if, if every base change with respect to an extension of finite transcendence degree satisfies A5, satisfies this, this weak finiteness property. Um, so, so yeah, this, this might seem somewhat uh, artificial, but actually there's many examples that satisfy this, let's say for, for K of a finite transcendence degree over Q bar. Uh, so for example, abelian varieties satisfy this powers of the multiplicative group, uh, semi-abelian varieties, connected Shimura varieties, and also connected mixed Shimura varieties of Kuga type. So for example, the, the Legendre family of elliptic curves uh, satisfies this. Um, so you see here the, the names um, associated to these, uh, uh, this property in, in, in these cases. Um, Non-examples here are just any connected commutative algebraic group and also powers of the additive group. Um, and uh, yeah, th th this, this might not be too uh, surprising since, uh, for instance, uh, the, the Mordelang conjecture also becomes false in in powers of the additive group. So, um, and, and somehow at this step, these, these algebraic groups are, are sieved out. And probably a general mixed Shimura variety satisfy this. So, so there has been recent uh, work um, uh, on the archive on, on mixed ax channel that, that should probably imply this property in, in general. Okay, so now I, I can present this theorem that more or less says if we know silver pink over some field, we also know it over any bigger field. So, so kind of if you know it for sub varieties defined over Q bar, you will also know it for sub varieties over C. Um, okay, but uh, so let me give the precise statement. So we have non-negative integers M and N, we have K inside L, an extension of algebraically closed fields. And C is a very distinguished category over K, over the smaller field. Uh, and X is a distinguished variety. So first of all, if we suppose that we know set P X prime MD for every distinguished variety X prime, then we also know Z P X L MD. So, so Z P for, for the base change of X to L. So you still have X in a way, but, but now you allow sub varieties that could be defined over L. Um, and then we have a second statement where we can get away with a bit weaker hypotheses. Namely, we just need to know Zpx prime m minus 1d and Zpx prime md minus 1 for every distinguished variety x prime. And then if we have a sub variety v of uh, xl of dimension at most m, which is not the base change Oh, this tells me that I have uh, five minutes left. Um, so which is not the base change uh, of a sub variety of X. So it's not already defined over K. Uh, then this V will contain at most finitely many optimal sub varieties of defect at most D. So this is the, the ZP XLMD statement, but only for sub varieties that are not already defined over the smaller field. And then we can get away with, with a bit weaker hypotheses. And I, I didn't want to, to state it because it, it's too technical, but actually we don't need to know it for every X prime, but somehow only for those X prime that arise if we start with X and we apply axiom A5 and maybe apply it again and again. And in each step, we somehow get more distinguished varieties turning up. Um, and we only need to know it for those that arise in this process. So in the case of abelian varieties, we would, for example, only need to know it for um, all quotients of the abelian variety X, which, which is of course much uh, less uh, uh, restrictive than needing to know it for every abelian variety. Um, okay, okay, so, so that's, uh, fairly abstract. So in the last four minutes, I want to speak about some unconditional applications of this. 
So, so this is a statement of the form something implies something else, and, and I want to give some uh, examples where we know the first something. So just to remind you, this calligraphic A2 is the moduli space of uh, principally polarized abelian surfaces over Q bar. Um, and this is a connected Shimura variety of dimension three for which the Andre Art conjecture holds, which is all we need to know uh, to be able to apply our theorem. Uh, and then also calligraphic E, as I said, is the Legendre family of elliptic curves over Q bar and E to the G denotes the, the G-fold fibered power of the Legendre family. Uh, and this is a, is a connected mixed Shimura variety of Kuga type of dimension G plus one. So here is again a, a, a scheme of a theorem. So, so X is a distinguished variety over Q bar. C is a curve inside X defined over K, um, satisfying that the special closure is equal to XK and the hypothesis hypsy. And then this set sigma of points on the curve whose uh, special closure has dimension at most the dimension of x minus two is finite. So, so the same as I had in the beginning. And now again, a table will appear um, with some instances where we can prove this. Um, so the, the first instance is in, in A2, x is A2. And then the hypothesis is that the curve is not already defined over Q bar. So the curve should not be the base change of a curve over Q bar. Um, so in this case, we, we apply the, the second part of our theorem where we only need the weaker hypothesis. And here the, the Q bar case is actually still open. Although um, uh, Chris Daw and, and Martin Orr showed some special cases. Um, and then if we are in a, in a fibered power of the Legendre family, we need no um, additional hypothesis on the curve. Uh, in this case, the, the Q bar case um, follows from combining uh, results of, of all these people mentioned here. And then we can apply um, our theorem to deduce the same over any uh, algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. Um, yeah, and, and the third um, instance would be uh, if we're in a semi-abelian variety G over Q bar, um, where the Q bar case is, is due to uh, Barroero, Kühne, and Schmidt in, in work in progress. Um, and just to give a, a concrete example of our result in, in A2, so I let HT denote the hyperelliptic curve of genus two defined by this equation, y squared equals x, x minus one, uh, x minus uh, theta one t up to x minus theta three t for some uh, polynomials theta i with uh, complex coefficients. And I let JT be its Jacobian. And I suppose that the generic endomorphism ring of this Jacobian is Z. Uh, and that this defines a curve in, in A2 that cannot be defined over Q bar. And in this case, what the theorem says is that there are at most finitely many specializations uh, T0 in C of, of T, uh, such that one of these uh, three possibilities holds. So JT0 is simple and its endomorphism ring is a, a Z module of rank four or JT0 is isogenous to a square of an elliptic curve, or JT0 is isogenous to a product of an elliptic curve and the CM elliptic curve. So this is just spelled out what, um, what silver pink for a curve in A2 means. Um, so, and with uh, this, I'd like to end my talk and, and thank you all for your attention. <laughs>